Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I honestly did not know this. The first computer dates all the way back to Adam and Eve. Yeah. It was an apple with limited memory, just one bite, and then everything crashed. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot, a real live patriot to call in with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning on a Thursday. And a good, good morning to you. Beautiful day. We're going to find out more about the weather in just a few moments. But right now, Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor we're very proud of, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Stop in and see them today. Along with some of our great advertisers, like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you right now let's go to the phone line and have our pledge of allegiance good morning top of the morning to you my friend thank you i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all always a good job doug thank you so much talk to you in a little bit and right now it's time for our weather and the weather brought to you by roger and the crew morning roger and everybody at knr rental 256 south 600 west of hayburn they get there early in the morning especially this time of the year because they know you've got a lot of projects you want to finish up with the best of tools and equipment that they have for rent at knr rental on the burley paul highway you couldn't miss them if you wanted to I mean, what a great big front yard with all that uh, great amount of tools and equipment for you. If you're not sure what you need, call them and ask. 678-3122. K&R Rental. Right now, let's find out about the weather. Another beautiful day in the valley as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting partly cloudy skies for today. A little bit of a breeze, not too bad. Expecting a high of 62 tonight, low of 33 for tomorrow as we kick off the weekend. Mostly sunny skies, high of 68 with an overnight low of 78. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies. The high pressure system is going to stick around just for another day or two. High about 74 with an overnight low of 42. Sunny and 77 for Sunday. Then for Monday, Monday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers and possible thunderstorms in the forecast. Partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 72. And then for next week, looks like temperatures are going to be cooling off for a little bit as clouds are going to be sticking around. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth. Oh, my. Well, at least we get a couple of good days. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate that. The weather brought to you by KNR Rental. Hello, Roger. They're all working out there right now serving you with the best of tools and equipment. You check it out today, 6783. One two two. Call. Ask questions before you stop over on the Burley Paul Highway. K and R Rental. Merv May, come on in here. Let's sell some cattle. All right. Hey, get set of steer calves. There, here to get Thirty-one moment of hand. Thirty-one going out of hand. Thirty. Oh, that's the chant of the world's best dog gone auctioneer, Merv May, over at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, eleven hundred Occidental Avenue in Burley. And sale time today at ten thirty. The sale that works for you, Merv May, Cade, Roggy, Lance, Udy the whole crew. Number to call for cattle consignments and sale information 6789411. Uh coming up from Ogden, Utah, Tule View Dairies bringing in
in a couple of semi loads of really good Holstein cross steers, Holstein heifers, butcher cows, and they're going to have butcher cows coming in from Acme Dairy, of course, Antelope Hills Dairy, Funk Dairy, and a really, really good trailer line run. So you stop in there today. Sale time, start time, 1030 this morning at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley, and Merv, sell those steers. All right. Hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all the 31, one and a half, 31, one and a half, and 32, two and a half, three and a half, 134, four and a half, and five and a half, five and a half, and a half, 135, 50, 135, and a half, seven dollar 35. Is that male? Get the bottom again. I'll tell you what, I appreciate it. And today is the National Day of Prayer. And oh, do we need to get down on our knees and ask for forgiveness and guidance. National Day of Prayer, an annual observance, which is always usually on the, always usually, well, it's usually on the first Thursday in the month of May. And uh, believe me, we've got a lot to be thankful for, and yet we have a lot to pray for. And we're going to be talking about that more in just a moment on this National Day of Prayer. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600. Yeah, well, we've got a caller, but we'll take it in just a minute. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. They also get there very early in the morning at 730 to 5, Monday through Friday, for all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs, and I mean all. They've got a great big warehouse, and they're ready to serve you with efficiency and knowledgeable people, always at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Don't forget, we're just right around the corner from having to have that air conditioner on all the time. They've got all the air filters to keep it running efficiently at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Now, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. How is Deanne doing? She's doing great. Uh, I absolutely am impressed uh, that she went through the first procedure like a heavyweight fighter that wanted to retain the belt, and she did. (laughs) Well, good for her. Tell her we're keeping her in our prayers. I appreciate that, my friend. You know, back in the days of the Civil War, you were either from the North or you were from the South. And your anger towards one program or another was reason to kill. And that's that just seems like what we're headed for right now with the Democrats and the Republicans. I have I never... I have never in my life seen such a tragedy, a travesty, and trash, the three T's, on television yesterday with that Senate hearing. I was embarrassed for the stupidity of the Democrats. I'm not trying to be prejudiced against them. A lot of people say, well, you're a right-wing conservative. You always say bad things about the Democrats. In this case, I have to. Keith, they acted like a bunch of spoiled children that somebody took their Tootsie Roll. They are absolutely deficient and void of any common sense, and they just want to keep taking the rake and mucking up everything on television, radio, and the newspaper because they absolutely can never accept that President Trump is president. You know, the problem is we live in an area that's basically Republican. But can you imagine what it'd be like if it was like 50-50? Oh my goodness, at this time it would really be terrible because these people, whether they, when they know it is wrong, they will still try to make it right. Yeah, but did you listen to the remarks, Keith? I know you're a sharp guy, and you watch politics and you study politics, but did you watch any of that yesterday? Honestly, did you see some of that? Oh, absolutely, in that Hirano or whatever, oh. Hawaii. That, I, you know, I, I can't describe how my feelings are against her. I can and I will for you, along with me. Uh, Senator Hirano, a very uh, absolutely disgusting woman from Hawaii, she didn't use this to garner any information. She used this as a ploy to put forth an idea of slander against not only Attorney General Barr, but also President Trump in this administration. Her words, her slanderous remarks, her name-calling were absolutely terrible, and I 
I felt that she should have been removed from the chambers. And quite frankly, I'd like to see a uh, recount or an overhaul of whether she should even remain as a senator. She's a despicable woman that absolutely has no business trying to lead the United States. Cory Booker was another one that was just absolutely hateful. Well, he wasn't the only one. I mean, you look at Hirano, and you look at Cory Booker, and you look at Kirsten Gillibrand, and you look at Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris went in there for one purpose, Keith, and you saw it. You saw it. She wanted to fight. She wanted to show herself on national TV as not just a senator, but also a presidential hopeful. It was sickening. Well, did you... I don't know that you picked up on this little note that... This Harana, she is so doggone stupid and dumb and everything. Somebody handed her a card with all this information on it, <laughs> and she she got lost a couple of times. Oh, I, Keith, I got to get a commercial break in here, but you're spot on. It was television at its worst yesterday. Thank you so much for your call. You All right, buddy. Thank you. I tell you what, uh, Deanne and I were watching that yesterday, and it just absolutely amazed me how Senator Hirano from Hawaii could put herself in such a negative and absolutely slanderous position as she did yesterday. It was despicable what she said and did. And I'm saying that from a non-prejudicial viewpoint of any senator, Republican or Democrat or Independent, that would have said and did the things that she did at that hearing yesterday. She really showed she is not qualified to be in the Senate. Don't forget Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley. Oh, good eating. <laughs> I tell you, they've got new menu items. And you got to check out all those breakfast skillets. And you got to check out the strawberry uh, vanilla crepes. Oh. I had them, and they are phenomenal. And all the new salads and everything, everything delicious at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. 611 North Oberlin and Burley, and another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. You stop in. Great people serving you the best of food at Denny's Restaurant. Mm -mm, really, really good. Also, don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I'm supposed to be over there this afternoon, as a matter of fact, at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. I'm uh, going to give you the number first and foremost because I want you to write it down, call them because they can help you get back to being you. Absolutely. 6781191. 6781191. If you're a aching and a painin from surgery, rehab or an accident whatever, please give them a call. Nick Greenwell and his physical therapist can and will help you. Like I said, get back to being you. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Call them today. 6781191. Nine one really, really good people. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated at four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. What I saw yesterday was nothing more, like I said earlier, than a bunch of spoiled brats that have all the information, and but they just want to keep digging and digging and digging. And hurting and hurting more, saying slanderous things. I, I honestly don't know why Barr sat there. You know, I've got, and I'm not proud of it at all. I am not proud of this. I've got a very short temper. And I'm not proud of it. I've tried to work on it for all these years, and it just doesn't seem to work or help. But to sit there and be slandered and demeaned, and all of this in a derogatory fashion on national television, that must have been extremely hard for Attorney General Barr to just sit there with a poker face. It must have been very hard on his family, his friends, his constituents. And I wouldn't have blamed him at all if he would have looked at Senator Hirano and said, My dear lady... You have lowered yourself to the pit of the gutter in your remarks to demean me and denigrate me. 
If you want valid information, ask the questions. If you're just going to be an attack dog with rabies, please turn your microphone off. She was despicable yesterday. Don't forget Rain for Rent. And, of course, with our buddy Jake and all the crew over there, they really have a dedicated sales and service staff. I mean, they know irrigation. Absolutely Rain for Rent. They are a Reinke Diamond dealer, and they want you to have a very, very successful crop growing season with the best of irrigation products and needs from Rain for Rent. All you got to do is give them a call at 438-5065. They're located at 134 South 600 West of Paul. Once again, 438-5065. Give them a call. Get them working for you. Rain for Rent. Absolutely. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning, sir. Yes. Do you agree or disagree with me? I agree. Like I said, I think all the senators and congressmen need to pass a civics test before they can become a senator. Uh, Wheels, turn him up a little bit, please. He's too low. Go ahead. And I also think that they should pass an IQ test before they become a senator or congressman. Oh, now, wait a minute there, my dear friend. You're asking way too much. No, (laughs) I'm not. I I truly believe some of these people could not pass a third grade test. As dumb as they are and as dumb as those questions were and how, oh, that Kamala Harris or... I don't know how you pronounce her name. Camilla Harris absolutely made a total fool out of herself in asking questions. Here's the basics of Camilla Harris, and if you don't agree with me, my dear friend, you tell me. Basically, what she told Attorney General Barr is that you had a grand total of about 30 days to go through over 1.4 million pieces of documentation. Why didn't you read every piece? Basically, that's what she said yesterday. Well, then my question back to Harris is when you were the DA of uh, California, LA or San Francisco, yep. Yep. why did you make your recommendations based on the prosecutors? Why didn't you go through all of the underlying evidence? I'm sure she didn't. Uh, Doug, everything that was discussed yesterday in a disgusting way was the fact that it was nothing more than muckraking. It was nothing more than digging out in a corral that's a little moist and you're trying to turn the soil over and turn up night crawlers. That's all it was. And the Democrats, from Jerry Nadler to Cory Booker to Camilla Harris and the despicable woman, Hirono from Hawaii, they made complete clowns out of themselves. And when they all left, they piled into the same car. Yes, they did. It was a... Who was it? I can't remember who described it as a three-ring circus. Yeah. yeah. Each one was trying to outdo the other one. But for what purpose? Honestly, ask this question of yourself and get, and get the answer. For what purpose? They've got all the information in the Mueller report, do they not? Yes. Okay. They understand the testimony that was given by I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of people and all the subpoenas and everything. So this information is there. Now, are they using this as a muckraker to see if somebody's going to trip up and say the wrong thing and go, gotcha, and then go after Trump again? That's all it is, Doug. That's exactly all it is. They are like a school child who has been told he cannot go out to recess because he's been bad. So they are throwing a temper tantrum. Yes. They are so mad that President Trump beat the woman that didn't even deserve to be running for president. They were so upset about that, and it was a rigged election, and they cannot understand how he beat them. And, you know, here, to carry it one step further quickly, and then I've got a commercial break, but I do not in any way, shape, or form demean Attorney General Barr for not showing up this morning for a secondary hearing for the Democrats to bring in their lawyers. I mean, these are secondary people that they wanted to come in and ask questions of Attorney General Barr. Now, he didn't have to do this because it's not part of the law and the prerequisites. And he told him, 
no, I'm not coming. They're going to go out and they're going to demean and cast aspersions against his character all day long and for the next couple of days. But you know something? I'm glad that he played Matt Dillon, got tough, and told him to get out of Dodge City. Exactly. And did you listen to some of the opening statements this morning on that? Oh, boy. They, and that was quite right. The minority leader there was saying that the Democrats did not want him there. That's right. That's why they changed the rules at the last minute. They did not want him to come because they did not want to look like the Senate. They did not want to be shown as petty and, you know not knowing anything. They have the right to go see the full, almost 100% unredacted report, and only two congressmen or senators have seen it. Nadler hasn't even taken the time to go look at it. Yeah. Now, what did I say on Monday's program? Were you listening in the first hour? You called in. I know you were listening. Didn't I say that if I were Attorney General Barr... I would say absolutely no to the second meeting they wanted, being today, May 2nd. I said on the air he should tell them in a very emphatic way, I'm not going to show up. You can start your proceedings, but the chair is going to be empty. I said that on Monday, and I'm glad that they are doing that. Exactly. And then they cut off that other congressman. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, I'll tell you what. These... Democrats are acting like a spoiled brat who is not getting an ice cream cone. And anyone that can't see this is absolutely blind. Doug, i got to run. Thank you so much. You bet. Hey, everybody, let's do what we can for our senior centers. I know I say it every day. It's probably getting old, but think about it. Absolutely. They are there. Some of them are homebound and need food, and they need some help. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, my dear friend. Thank you. Hey, I want to remind everybody about our friends over at Ark Animal Hospital. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Dr. Bill and the crew at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. Number to call, 678-1177. Got some sick cattle, or maybe you've got a puppy dog or a little kitty cat that's not doing well. I'll tell you what, they are a mixed animal practice, and they want to make sure you've got all healthy animals. Please get a hold of them today. They are the best at what they do to serve you. 678-1177 Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn. It's true, they do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Don't forget to Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox with their home comfort systems. Oh boy, they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on new systems. All you have to do is call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678 Four five nine. See the dealer for details. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Calls are welcome. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Hey, we got some sales coming up. I'm going to hit that right now and then take some more calls. Get on the phone line. Give me a jingle. Uh, Bennett Boys Auction Service. Got to get this right now. Two sales. Two sales. One tomorrow Friday and the other one on Saturday. I'll tell you about them real quick. Bennett Boys Auction auction service newton estate auction is going to take place on friday night and it's going to be starting at 4 30 tomorrow in buell 825 11th avenue north in buell and they're going to have a lot of really nice furniture and antiques and all kinds of glassware and collectibles oh boy lawn and garden supply items you better be there that's tomorrow in buell at 4 30 managed by the bennett boys auction service look for the signs and and then on Saturday at 11 o'clock, over in Jerome at 214 North Road, you can't miss it. Look for the signs, Bennett Boys Auction Service, Garner and Chisholm Antique and Collectibles Auction. Another rip and good sale. They got a roll top desk. They got all kinds of really neat things, collectibles, camping gear, saddles, you name it. And that's going to start at 11 o'clock on Saturday, uh, 214 North Road, Jerome. Bennett Boys Auction Service. No sale too big. No sale too small the bennett boys yup yup they sell them all absolutely all right calls are welcome and appreciated 436-2244-1-866-927-4587 uh i just really want you to remember 
And I'm not afraid to step on toes here this morning. We've been stepping on certain people's toes for over a couple of months now. This is the National Day of Prayer. And here's what I'd like, honestly. I would like, towards the end of the program today, if possible, a pastor or minister to call in and uh, give us maybe about three or four minutes thoughts in a short prayer on the National Day of Prayer. I would really, really relish that. We have been asking for clergy to get involved in this program for a long time to discuss some of the community, state, and national ills. And we've had crickets. Today is the National Day of Prayer. It would be very appropriate for them to call in. At 10.30 this morning, I have Dr. Gerard Lomero, and we're going to wrap up his conversation at about maybe 10 minutes till the hour of 11, and there's a couple of minutes right there between that and the top of the hour. I'd love to have a minister or a pastor call in, because as a nation, we have to get back to God and his principles. And I absolutely think it's time today, especially to get down on our knees and pray for this nation, pray for leadership, pray for guidance, pray for the families, pray for our communities, and I think this is a necessity. There are those in the audience that uh, might be offended by that. (laughs) Well, look in the mirror and you may be the problem. But this is the National Day of Prayer, and I would welcome in that time area between, oh, let's say 10 to 11 and 5 to 11, just a real short, nice prayer and thoughts for today on this National Day of Prayer. Let's see if we have a member of the clergy call in. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. In just a moment, I want to get into this mess with Venezuela. Oh, my. It gets worse and worse. And there's some correlation there that all of us should be aware of and acknowledge. And I'll tell you what that is in just a minute. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental. Sales, service, and parts, and I'm talking all the equipment for lifting and digging and pushing and carrying. I'll tell you what, grading, leveling, laying side, they've got everything over there. The Doosan loaders, the excavators, all the bobcats, I'm telling you. And if you don't know how to run them, they'll teach you. They get a big sandbox right out behind. Absolutely. Barry Equipment and Rental, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and the Nampa location for the best. You check it out today. Barry Equipment and Rental, serving you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know, this National Day of Prayer, it's, uh, we were founded as a Christian nation, and, uh, I think Patrick Henry, when I was back in Williamsburg many years ago, I specifically asked the guide, "Is there a seat where Patrick Henry uh, in the in the House of Burgess or was in Virginia there?" But you, if, you know what he said, and I'm quoting from him. He says it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this nation was founded by religionists, but not but by Christians and on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, since 1777, every session of Congress has begun with prayer that is paid for by us taxpayers. Mm -hmm. There's a taxpayer uh, supported minister opens every session of Congress. That is, you know, when you think about it, that's what made this country great, is the fact that we worshiped almighty god he's blessed us so much he's blessed us individually and collectively but how can he bless us and i'm i don't think he is blessing us with all the storms and all the destruction going on and how can he when we're killing babies and when we're doing all the things that we're doing well let me jump in here adrian adrian 
everybody. I, I need to jump in, and we need to have a two-sided conversation on this a little bit. Number one, I remember vividly a year ago on this program when we uh, mentioned and highlighted the National Day of Prayer. A couple of days afterwards, I got an email uh, from an individual in uh, Magic Valley area, per, and I'm not going to really narrow it down. And this individual condemned me for having and uh, mentioning the National Day of Prayer because it offended this person. And they thought that uh, this show should be a show regardless of having to listen to anything regarding religion. To that person, I will say again, You have the great opportunity that if something is said and or done on this program that you don't like, A, you can call in, B, you can respond to me with a letter with your name so I know who you are, or C, if you don't like it, turn the dial. (laughs) There you go. Um, No, it's just, you know, we've we've been so tolerant. We got the 2% out there, the homosexual agenda, and all that goes with that. And, and now everything is geared around the catering to the 2%. Yeah. You know, and yes. we've gone so far from yes. the roots of this country. The Supreme Court in 1892 ruled, and I use the word, and they emphasized, it was called, we are emphatically a Christian nation. Yes. And, of course, you know, the Earl Warren Supreme Court back in 62 and 63 took prayer and Bible reading out of this country, or out of our public schools, and... We've been on a downward trend anywhere. We're we're headed toward oblivion. I totally agree. Adrian, thank you for your remarks, and we'll see if we have any of the pastors and church leaders call in later this morning. Thank you, sir. God bless you. National Day of Prayer. Thank you. And um, there are, in Filer here, we had a mayor's prayer breakfast uh, on last Saturday, and then we've got a, um, at noon at the city hall, uh, there's a, a special prayer sessions gotta go thank you very much you betcha sir thank you for your good remarks this morning thank you very much caller i'll be right with you i want to remind everybody about dino septic service oh they are the best at what they do yes they are they get there early in the morning cleaning up after us kind of you know i mean like if you need septic tanks pumped you don't want to do it Ooh, they do And they do a wonderful job. And, of course, liquid waste removal and sewer and sink drain lines clean, mainline irrigation installation and repair, water and sewer lines installed, backhoe service, all of this and so much more at Dino Septic Service. Please get a hold of them today. Numbers 436-6526 or Burley 678 one six three eight. They are the best with the big truck that says "Smells Cargo" on the way. Dino Septic Service. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes. Good morning, Zeb. Uh, this uh, border crisis is uh, not only at the border; it's rapidly entering all our cities. And unless these shackles are taken off, our police, the military, the border patrol. I get this country maybe three more years before major rioting happens in every major city in this country. Tony, there was a happening yesterday on the border that absolutely scares me. And I know that you heard about it, but yet we don't know the gist of everything that took place. There was a call for medical services and three ambulances responded. Now, news people, including a gentleman by the name of Griff Jenkins from Fox News, hurried to the scene of where these ambulances went, and they're not getting any answers. Some of the information that was leaked out is that the people were really afraid, and I'm not saying this on my own, it was already leaked out this morning, that some of these illegal aliens that are trying to come into this country from Africa may are and possibly are carrying the Ebola virus. That ought to make you a little nervous. Well, I think uh, this, they, these people are purposely sent here because, you know, the thing about the Bible, uh, what it says about uh, pestilence and uh, viruses and all this stuff, 
we're, we're, we're rapidly entering the germ warfare uh, part, and there's so many countries out there that want this country brought to its knees, and they'll send anybody in here that's affected with any kind of disease. Look at the measles thing yeah. that's going on yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But when they started uh, the intimation that possibly Ebola viruses uh, were ascertained as part of the problem, whoa, Tony, we've got a real problem on our hand with health, diseases, and infected people, no documentation, no records. I'm scared. I want to see that border shut down. I don't care what. I'm going to say this loudly and clearly. I don't care what kind of power source needs to be employed. Put it on the border order and stop this invasion well it, <clears throat> that law enforcement has to start in our neighborhoods we've got to clean out the neighborhoods if it takes the military to go from house to house to get these undocumented insurgents out it's going to happen absolutely Otherwise, we're, we're going to lose the country in a couple of years. You, it, uh, Tony, I think you're being kind and generous on a couple of years. I think it's going to be shorter than that. This invasion is critical to stop. Thank you for your call. Go give Mary a kiss. Tell her I said hello, please. I certainly will. All right. Don't get slapped. There you go. Uh, calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I cannot believe what's going on down there. It's unbelievable. Uh, Border Patrol and other agencies and personnel are scared to death about these infectious diseases. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox and Home Comfort Systems. Oh. Oh, be comfy. All you have to do is call them and find out more. Yes, sir, Bob, they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new home comfort system. Find out more about it. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or go online at ramseysonline.com. Absolutely, Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know, I seen on the news, I think it was yesterday, about Lenakid. Yeah. Have you heard of that before? Yeah, basically what it is, and it's a disgusting and despicable action that's going on. They found out uh, by tracing some of these children that some of the same uh, human smugglers coming across the border are using the same children, saying they're part of the family. They've caught some of these kids three and four times. It's pathetic. That's what I was going to bring up. You know, I could just see one of them border guys. Uh, Haven't I seen you here before? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, you know how they tracked one of them, Keith? You know how they tracked one of them? They put a special numeric... Pardon me? Didn't they give them a swab or something to Mm -hmm. test them? Well, there were some uh, numbers that were put on the child's shoes, on the bottom of the shoes, and they traced those numbers, and there were, this one boy had been up here three times with three different families being claimed as their son. Yeah, and I don't know how these, boy, they must be good at training children better than we were. Oh, my goodness. Well, what's going on with the border is just... What's going on at the border is a crime. It's a crime against you and me, the taxpayers. It's a crime against this country, its sovereignty, its freedoms, and it's got to stop. And nobody, I don't think there's anybody in Congress on either side of the aisle that has the backbone or the brains to do it. This this African deal that's come in now, that Ebola? Yes. Oh, that's... That is really, really scary. Well, now, just a minute, Keith. Don't say coming in, because there were assertions and there were words used that maybe the Ebola virus was part of the problem of the medical scare yesterday. They're researching it and they're checking it. The reason I brought it up is because it's extremely possible, because many of these illegal aliens are coming in on these caravans from Africa. Yes, and that really is scary. All right, I've I've got to get the weather on, my dear friend. I, I agree. I, I've got to get the weather on quickly, my friend. I'm running late as usual, and I'm going to ask the second caller to stay on the line. Keith, God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Uh, are you noticing a diminishment in your hearing? And you're going, huh? 
Pardon? Please repeat that. Well, it might be something related to your blood pressure. It could be perhaps changes like diabetes. It could be any number of things. Well, I urge you to talk to the professionals that can find out and help you. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and they're located right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. And the number I stress for you to call and make an appointment, 312-0957. Give them a call today. Right now, here's the weather. Another beautiful day in the valley as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting partly cloudy skies for today. A little bit of a breeze, not too bad. Expecting a high of 62 tonight, low of 33 for tomorrow as we kick off the weekend. Mostly sunny skies, high of 68 with an overnight low of 78. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies. The high pressure system is going to stick around just for another day or two. High about 74 with an overnight low of 42. Sunny and 77 for Sunday. Then for Monday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers and possible thunderstorms in the forecast. Partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 72. And then for next week, looks like temperatures are going to be cooling off for a little bit as clouds are going to be sticking around. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gina. And brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. They are the best at what they do. Yep. Call them for a hearing screening today, 312-0957. Caller, you have been extremely patient. Go, you're on the air. Morning, Zeb. I hate to say it, but I think it might even have to come down to us citizens of the United States to defend our own country once again. I agree. And then whatever way that may be, I'm not advocating violence, but I'm telling you that it's going to have to come down to it. And there are those of us who will do it and do it proudly protect our families, our friends, our loved ones, our neighbors, and people we don't even know, because that's who we are. We're American citizens. We are American people. Riley, let me ask you a question, and you're a sharp young man. Uh, What you just said is something that the Venezuelan people would love to be able to say to protect their families and to protect their country, but they in Venezuela had the government run over them and have gun confiscation. They haven't got anything more than broomsticks to protect themselves, and that is what's headed to America under possible socialism where these democratic socialists, and they are, want to take away guns, they want to have complete government control. I don't understand how Americans can be so blind and so dumb. Well, I don't think that the majority of Americans are. I think it's the ones that have been, so far, been handled from cradle to whatever point in their life they are by government and told that the government will take care of you. They're used as a pawn, like I've said many times before, they're just a pawn in a game of chess. And pawns in a game of chess, I'm not fluent in chess, but from what I understand, they're pretty expendable. Yeah. And so you use them. They're using these people who don't even go to school. They don't have an education if they have one past the sixth grade. They don't know. They don't use their head to think. All they do is watch TV and, yeah, that's right. We're going to say what old weirdo, what's her name, says. They don't think for themselves. If they took the time to think for them what's in their best interest, things would change. And as far as taking away our firearms or or anything like that, yeah, we know they're trying. But, you know, I would rather die free than live live as a slave. I agree with your comments, and I thank you for your call, as always, Riley. You're always welcome here. Thank you very much. Thank you. There was a comment made yesterday by Juan Williams of Fox News that I found to be extremely uh, scary and pathetic and wussified. I'm going to lump all those together. There was talk about uh, gun confiscation and the lack of the Second Amendment down in that country like we have here for private gun ownership. And Juan Williams came out and absolutely de- came out and denounced gun ownership to the point where, oh, yeah, well, if that happened up here, all there would be is more chaos and more shooting and more people shot and more people killed. As if to say that we should not have the right to protect our families, our communities, and our country. I was really shocked by that because the way he said it, it was better to be uh, dead than red. 
And that's the kind of a concept that has seen the downfall and the diminishment of a lot of countries. The Second Amendment is extremely important for us to retain in this country, as is the First Amendment with our freedom of speech, which every day is under attack and being diminished. College campuses, in any classroom, uh, basically in our court system, what happens with uh, just free speech between people on a subway, somebody can turn around and say, I'm offended by that and I'm going to sue or you address this person by the wrong pronoun and therefore we're going to write your name down and pursue a court case against you, ludicrous. But it's happening. We are losing our freedoms and our rights, and we're not doing anything about it. We're letting the liberal loons, and they are, take over this country. When are we going to show our backbone and stand up and say, enough. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I would submit to you, the audience, that there is daily obstruction of justice going on right now back in Washington, D.C. Whoa. What's he talking about? Are you pointing your finger at the Trump administration? Not necessarily. I'm pointing my finger at the halls of Congress, the House of Representatives, and also the Senate. They really, and I I dare somebody to call me and tell me I'm wrong, they really, as senators and congressmen, are obstructing justice because they're not doing anything. They're obstructing working for the American people and the protection and preservation of this country and our Constitution. There's your real obstruction of justice. One person said on the Democratic side, well, we need to provide at least $4.5 billion more to the border to have more clothing and more food for these illegal aliens. More medical attention. Wait a minute. That's my money and yours. $4.5 billion more. And really for what? Illegal aliens that do not belong in this country. They are not citizens of this country. And quite frankly, we can't be a sponge and keep absorbing them into this country. Call her quickly. I've only got two minutes and I'm going to have to cut you off. Go real fast. Caller, are you there? There. Wheels, is there a call on that line, please? Yeah, it was Randy, but um, his line must be messed up. Well, um, either talk or we can't take you, so I've got to hopefully he'll call back. Uh, Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I am absolutely thrilled, and I mean that, uh, with our sponsors and advertisers on this program. I salute them and thank them for their dedication to us. And uh, our major sponsor, of course, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Nobody does it better than they do serving you, not only with tires, but also the absolute best in brake service with highly trained brake technicians, front end alignments, and after all the winter driving and hitting about 97,000 potholes, maybe you better get in and have your front end lined up on your vehicle. The shocks and the struts, the batteries, but I go back to the word service. Nobody does it better. They open the door and come at your vehicle at a high lope saying, may we serve you. And right now, many, many of their top tires are on sale. I mean, all the tread designs, all the sizes for your cars, your pickups, your SUVs. I urge you to stop in and work with the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. Yep, the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And by the way, we're going to have the new manager of the Tires West location in Burley on our program this next half hour. 
Wow. Where did the time go? It ran away. And uh, we want to urge you to stay tuned next hour. We're going to have a very short, very abbreviated uh, Chamber of Commerce report with Lydon Crane, my old friend, at 906. Then we're going to have Randy Wynn and Trent Walls on the program. Uh, till about 9.30, and then at 9.30, I kind of twisted his arm a little bit to come on the program this morning, and he graciously is going to be here, Idaho Senator Kelly Anton. That is just some of what we've got planned for this next hour. But right now, we're going to let the big boys from CBS come in and mess everything up. We'll be back in about seven minutes. Wheels, it's all yours. Oh, good morning, good morning, and welcome back. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major, major sponsor, and that's, of course, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, helping you get back to being you. And I've got a telephone call that I can't take at this time on my cell phone. I don't know why people do that on a local basis. Well, we'll just call Zev on his cell phone while I can't talk to him on the air. Right now, I also want to remind you about Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. And they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new home comfort system. You better check it out. Find out more. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or visit them on Online at RamseysOnline.com. Terms and conditions apply. See the dealer for details. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. And real, real quick before we go to our chamber report, Light and Crane's waiting in the background. I want to remind you about Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, manager, his staff, his family, serving you. Always acknowledging the solemn responsibility they have to provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort. And always, always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. I urge you to call them and find out more about the prearrangements of funerals to take a lot of the stress and worry away from our families. That number, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary in Rupert. And Joel Heward also serving you at... Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Like I said, we've got about a three-minute uh, abbreviated Minicasha Chamber report, and here's my friend, your friend, Lydon Crane. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Doing well. How are you? Well, I'm nervous. My guests that are supposed to be following you still haven't showed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. I'm full of a lot of hot air. I can sit here and talk for 20 minutes. I'm good. <laughs> well, just consider the balloon to be almost half full. We might have to refill it again. <laughs> okay. What's going on at the chamber? Uh, we just had our board meeting this morning, and uh, we... Uh, Got to meet with uh, Penny Main, who, as we announced last week, and uh, have a few things up on our website, is our new uh, CEO and director. And uh, I guess her official title is the president. We are excited to have her on. She's got a lot of uh, experience in the marketing and uh, telecommunications industries here in the, the Minicaja and Magic Valley. And uh, she's ready to go. She's hitting the ground running. And there will be more to come here in the next few weeks with her, and we might even get a chance to have her on the radio. All right. Well, congratulations to her. Congratulations, really, to your Minicasha Chamber Board, because I know that you really wanted to get that position filled. Yes. Yes, we did, and we're, we're very glad to have her on. And so uh, looking forward here over the next couple of months, uh, I, we did want to say thank you to everybody who participated in the Women's Expo last week. And uh it's uh, It was a great event. We look forward to doing it again next year, and uh, hope everybody had a great time. And, uh, Go ahead, Lydon. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. There was a little delay there. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just fine. Um, here in the next couple of months, we will be starting some of our summer events. Um, the main one, uh, which we've discussed before, is our golf scramble that's coming up on uh, June 19th. <laughs> That will be at the River Edge Golf Course here in Burley, Idaho. Um, I believe we still have just a few sponsorship spots available for that. Um, if anybody is interested in hosting a hole, and uh, time to brush off the golf clubs and uh, come out and enjoy some great summer weather. You know, are you going to be playing or are you going to be a visitor in the gallery? 
I'm I'm probably I'm the peanut gallery. I'm I'm going to be there the heck to heckle everybody. <laughs> 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 no, I this year if I can uh, if I can do it, I'm planning to uh, sponsor a hole and be there with some of my staff. We've got some uh, great interns coming in this summer, and I want them to get out and meet and rub shoulders with folks in the community. And so I, I may turn over the bad golfing to uh, somebody else in my office. I'll tell you what, my guest just showed up in the studio and uh, Leiden for information about the golf tournament, anything else going on in the Minicash area with the Chamber of Commerce, tell us the number they can call for more information. Yes, uh, it's 208-679-4793 and ask for uh, Lorena Gauss or Penny Main. Well, I'll tell you what, we appreciate your taking the time to call in this morning, and I know you're busy, busy even after April 15th with all the taxes and everything. Lydon Crane, God bless you, man, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Appreciate it, Zeb. Have a great day. All right, sir. Thank you very much. We're going to come right back here to the studio right now, and I've got two gentlemen that are waiting here, one of which we're going to be introducing to the general public here as the new manager of Tires West Les Schwab on Overland in Burley. But first and foremost, a dear friend of ours, Randy Wynn. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Zeb. How are you today? Nice to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. It's glad We're glad to be here. I'm surprised you're not out playing golf fishing or doing something else weather's got to be a little better first uh, it's going to get good this weekend i hope so yeah i hope so. maybe hit 80 on sunday I, that's what i heard I i'm so. going i'm out of here <laughs> listen uh big transitions in your life yeah yeah i sold the store to the company to the les schwab company uh -huh. as of may 1st uh -huh. and uh and and everything's the same same crew same service same pricing everything we just have a new manager and uh, we'll introduce him in a minute but yeah every so far we're doing well and and Customers have, have enjoyed Trent, and uh, things are going well so far. You know, I think kudos and congratulations and thank yous are in order to you. Uh, you've done such a wonderful job being our liaison with the information and everything that's going on at all seven of the Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And, Randy, my wife and I, we can't thank you enough. Oh, we appreciate you too, Zeb. You guys are good friends to our family. You, you know, you've been good friends to Les Schwab, and you advertised well for us. We really appreciate you very much well and that uh, goes without saying you made it easy for us thank you and thank you. Uh, i wish you the best in the future any plans of like mountain climbing up uh, mount everest or chasing goats in the himalayas <laughs> what, what are you going to do i don't know yet lots of golfing though i know that you like yeah, to play golf a little bit you could probably uh, beat me though no don't, don't don't go there i used to be able to be playing pretty good what do you shoot for uh, i don't know it's not very good i don't want to stay on the air <laughs> when you get to number let's see number two on the burley golf course if you'll gaze out into the water there is one of my nine irons still out there <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's that could be yeah that's let's cool. introduce this uh, big guy sitting next to you a little bit randy what uh, can, what can you tell us about him well his name's trent wallace he came from uh he started at the buell les schwab store oh and uh, then he's transferred a lot he's been to uh to uh sacramento, Ca sacramento california area oh, then my. he went to logan utah then Columbia Falls, Montana, and now he's back here. And there was there was almost 15 managers ran for this store. They have 500 store managers, and 15 applied basically. And uh, Trent Trent was selected, and uh, he, he we're excited about him. He knows the farm market. Uh, the crew likes him. He's very personable. Uh, he's a good asset. We're glad to have him. So. Well, let's. Say, I'll tell you what. If you would, Trent, pull that microphone out of there and just hold it real close. If you would, kind of. Like, are you married? Yes. yes okay, sir, hold yeah. it real close, like you're kissing your wife. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yes, we are. I am married. Been married for 25 years. We actually just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this last past February. Really? So, yep. And she is a Magic Valley girl. She was born and raised in Hollister. So. Uh, well, well, welcome aboard, Zeb. I'm home. Really? I'm home. You feel that way. Hold it real close, yeah. please. Yes. Uh, okay, why do you say that? You've been all over, man. Uh, what makes you feel like this is home? Well, I was born and raised in Twin Falls and Jerome area, so yeah. Magic Valley has always been my home, and that's just been my goal. Uh, but, Zeb, I'll tell you, the Les Schwab family, they take such good care of you. I, I our testimony is so strong on that and uh the way i will we do whatever it takes to because they do whatever it takes to take care of us yeah. and i so i've had to you know just the general 
vast uh, where like randy said i've had to go on i've gone to sacramento twice i've been to logan utah I opened up a brand new store wow. went to columbia falls montana so i know all the markets i know we and i'm just it's just in my blood but, you uh, learn how to dress very warm up at columbia falls montana and still be able to change tires yes sir yes <laughs> i can yep. attest to that yeah I, I was wearing t-shirts the other day when everybody else was wearing coats <laughs> we were giving them like a hard a time wave. about that yeah <laughs> listen let me ask you this uh did you ever have a chance to meet Mr. Les Schwab before he passed? I did. Uh, what a great man. Uh, I met him way back, let's see, it would have been in the mid-90s. And I used to announce the Prineville Rodeo up there. And I met him one time, uh, he had a box in the front row up at the Prineville Rodeo grounds. And after the rodeo met him, and he was as kind and generous and considerate as he turned his company into. Yes, sir. Yep. What are your thoughts about that? Um, we, you know, that's how we always act, and we feel, and we treat, and the respect that we have for Mr. Schwab and his family, and how good, it, how well they take care of us. But we always act and treat our employees the way that he treated us, and we always make sure that he, we are given the same opportunity to the the newest person that we hire, right. the same opportunity that I've had in my in, in my family. And that's the tradition that is keeps it just keeps going and going, and we still do things right when nobody's looking. Just the way Mr. Schwab taught us how to do that. Would you? And I know Randy already has the answer for this. If I asked him, but uh, would you agree with me that the key is a four-letter word for Les Schwab, and that's service? <laughs> yes, sir. Service and going the extra mile and doing the doing the right thing. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I've been impressed. Uh, we've been on the road and have had some trouble maybe with a flat tire or whatever the case might be. And they, the Les Schwab Centers, regardless of where you are in the Northwest and in the West, they seem to be so service-oriented. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's all it is. That's or is this still old fashioned, old fashioned handshake business and looking people in the eye and yeah. doing the right thing. No, I always tell, I've told Zeb many times that you know everybody sells tires. It's the service and the people that set you apart. Yeah. I mean, and you people, the last thing they want to do is spend all day sitting in the tire store. And uh, so if you just take care of customers, get them in and out. That's what we try to do, and that's what Trent's going to try to do too. That's that's what sets you apart. You know, with Randy coming on the program many many times and talking about tires and front end alignments and shocks and struts and all the batteries and the brake service and everything. It goes without saying that for safe driving, it's all in one location, and that's your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, isn't it? Absolutely. We're one team, one goal. Yeah. What about the team? I mean, uh, I've noticed the personalities, and Randy and I, we've been good friends for a long time, but the personalities of the employees, I mean, they all seem to be happy, upbeat, and active like they really appreciate their job absolutely we we do we we love our job uh we love our career they and they just the les schwab family takes they i just can't stress that enough of how well they take care of us and we also you know we we have some big shoes to fill with randy and what what he's done mm-hmm. and the way he's taken care of those employees and we're going to continue to do that just like mr schwab and the wind family did i've got to ask you randy uh of course i I've, I've known you for years and years and years excellent excellent basketball official and sports aficionado too bad he's a seattle seahawk fan <laughs> but uh i showed him your packers montage here. <laughs> it's pretty much green and gold in here. You don't see a lot of the aquamarine of the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> That's true. But uh, what about your future? I mean, you're still a young guy. Yeah, I don't know. My, my back was hurting, so that, that's that's the reason for doing yeah. this. Uh, but uh, get my back healthy. And I've got a couple of opportunities that people have talked to me about. So um, give it a few months. I'm going to do something. So. Are you going to miss going there early well, in the I, morning? I, well, sure. I, I told Trent on the way out. It's weird because I wanted to. I had to get up at six thirty, get my uniform on, and be there and not be in there. It's different. It's a weird feeling. I've only had two days of this now, and it's. It's definitely strange. So, are you keep looking over your shoulder, wondering if you made the right decision? Oh, I mean, I made the right decision. <laughs> I did make the right decision. Now, you have a daughter. Yeah. And is that the only child? Yeah, I have two. 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 Oh my goodness, so, that's going to allow you and afford you more time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. They're excited about. How old it, are so. they now? Seven and three. 
So. They couldn't be seven and three already. <laughs> yeah, we adopted our second one. Oh, so, wonderful! Yeah. That's yeah, great. Excited, well, so. you and your wife and your family—I just can't tell you how much we appreciate what you've done, and certainly hope you have a happy future. No, we hope you do too, Zeb. You're a good man, and we appreciate well, you. Well, I appreciate that. You've got, like you said, big shoes to fill, Trent. But uh, I can tell by the look on your face, you got a great personality. Do you, do you bring to the table any new, innovative ideas, or what's going on in your world right now? Knowing that you're going to be the manager. Oh, we just we just stick to the uh, the Les Schwab basics. We just take care of the customers, uh, just like what Randy did. Um, you know, and we'll definitely uh, just keep it going. And the world class customer service that all our stores provide uh, that's that's our that's our blueprint for success. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, you said you were from originally uh, this area, yep. And then you've kind of gone around the Northwest a little bit. But uh, what are your likes, dislikes, hobbies, stuff like that? Well, uh, I'm a Denver Broncos fan. And oh. A big, uh, <laughs> So we got, let's get that out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, I certainly thank these guys for being on the program this morning. Um, Are you serious? Yeah, you look like a normal person. I know, I know. Uh, big, huge Boise State fan. Uh, you can ask any of and any of my colleagues that I've worked with throughout. I, every time I go, there's Boise State blue and orange everywhere in my office. Um, love to hunt and fish. I definitely a family man uh would love to golf uh, we can't wait to get on the golf course it's been a very hectic 30 days but it, yeah as soon as we can we gotta get on that golf course but. wow what would you tell all the people that are listening about you taking over what do you want them to know about uh tires west and the new manager trent walls all i can tell you is that we'll be there for you we will be there uh the service will will even be they did a great such a great job with the service and the, we care about the community. Right. Uh, our, our community support will probably even go more. That's less was always about giving back to the community, and we will continue that tradition and probably even do more. That's the nice thing. They give us that flexibility. You know, the one thing I don't know too much about, did uh, Les and his family, did they have sons and or daughters that wanted to pursue staying in the tire business? Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he had a son that passed away, and unfortunately his daughter that was uh, being you know being transitioned to take over the company uh tragically lost her life for you know oh. cancer uh so, so sorry. But, but yeah it's still family owned uh now it's grandchildren and they still have the same visions and and it's you know closed on sundays they're a very very family oriented company and like I, I just can't stress enough of how well they take care of, of our families and, and, they, and, they, and sorry Zevin, they've had many people many offers to sell out and go public with that and uh, they just don't want to do they want to be a family business Good. take care of yep. people and uh, they're just afraid if that happened it would just be another corporation well, so. Randy you and I were talking about this one time uh, they've moved basically the headquarters from Prineville to, to Bend Oregon Bend yeah, okay. just up the road may I ask why well, well they kept the distribution centers in Prineville, I they see. kept the recraft everything, but the it, it was too hard to attract talent to go work in the main office in Prineville. People would rather live in Bend to do that kind of a job than they I would see. in Prineville. That's the only reason. Everything else I stayed see. there. Just the headquarters moved, and that was yeah. it. So. so, how many locations in the northwest or the western states are there currently for Les Schwab Tire Centers? Uh, there's 465. 465. Now, what about expansion? I mean, when you have a product that is as good as yours, and you have people representing the product that are top line people. Uh, what was sky's the limit, or do they want to basically stay within the western part of the United States? Oh no, the sky's the limit. Uh, they definitely. We just barely went into Southern California. Really? Um, in oh. fact, the next year we're going to be putting our very first store in Wyoming. Um, I definitely see, you know, going more, and then we're definitely hitting uh, Colorado area. So I would I would definitely see Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, really being right there. But they're also looking at what we have here and making sure we're not missing anything in the in the solid Northwest Foundation that we have. What about the tires themselves? Now, are most all the tires processed where? Uh, those those are all built in. A lot of them are built in the United States, but uh, we don't have uh, our like our own. We do have our own brand tire that's, yes. that's being built now for us, um, and it just gives us that much more flexibility and freedom, and so we can 
you know, make out for in case there's a warranty issue, we take care of all that. What do you think? And both of you can answer this, Randy, uh, with his experience and you coming in as manager. What do you think's the big selling point to the general public over other tire companies in favor of Les Schwab? Well, I think first off, like Trent said, there's almost 500 locations now, and uh, you know, if, if your if your son or daughter is going to college, it's peace of mind knowing that wherever they're at, there's probably a Les Schwab store there, mm-hmm. and they get they get warranties, they get their service, everything done and, and, and versus going to an individually owned store somewhere that and that's a big advantage Absolutely. Um, just that alone is that and then the service I mean people know Les Schwab is synonymous for service absolutely and and, and like I said that's what that's what sets us apart so Trent your thoughts on that I uh, definitely second that I mean every store is built the same way we have the same model it's and it's just one team one goal yeah I know that whether I go in for a grease and oil or whether I go in to have my tires rotated or get new tires or whatever the service has been phenomenal and uh, Randy of course has always taken care of us and we've really looked forward to going down there but irregardless of that I mean I've had problems where up in Mountain Home Idaho or maybe other places where I've had a flat tire or whatever the service has always been first class yep. Yeah, it's a, it's just that that blueprint for success. Yeah, uh, we're all from the same mold. Uh, we less always less always dreamed and envisioned. That was his number one thing was taking care of you and helping grow people. And he always guaranteed if you wanted to be a store manager, there would be a store uh, store available for you. And that sixty seven years later, that that is still going absolutely and it must be something as a very well endowed program of keeping the employees interest to stay there yes sir uh les was always big about sharing profits uh and it's no it's, there's no secret about it but 50 percent of the profits goes back to the employees through their wow. bonus bonus their retirement uh then through their obviously their wages and the benefits the benefits are second to none uh, you they just the les schwab family takes I just can't stress it enough. I, I'm really fired up right now. You know you are. I'm sitting here, and I wish you folks, uh, if you're on the computer, you can see it on our cameras. I've got that camera on over there, and both these guys just, I mean, they bubble up, and you're excited. And that's something that we don't see a lot of today, excitement about your job and who you represent. Absolutely. This is our life. I'm just so impressed with that because here today we're hearing all the negativity about, oh, so-and-so doesn't work. They'd rather have a tin cup attitude and get everything given to them. I can see that you hit the ground running. You can't wait to get to work in the morning. (laughs) He's a great great man. He'll do a good job here. Oh, I'm excited for you. Anything else you want to bring up to the public to introduce yourself, Trent Walls, as the new manager of Tires West? I... I'm just home. Uh, I've been doing this for my whole life. I've been with the Les Schwab Company for 20 years, but I've uh, been doing it longer than that. And I'm home, and I'm just ready to have fun and, and, and enjoy enjoy the people that I was born and raised with. And and we're, we're going to take care of you. We're going to be out there in the public. You're going to see me in high school football games. I, that's what I enjoy is being out and supporting all the all the membership of this great community in this great valley and we're doing whatever we can to make sure that we help out that next person. You must have been to Randy Wynn's School of Personality because, man, I, I think you guys are great. Yeah. That's that's Thank wonderful. You. Thank yeah. you, Zeb. I want to say to Randy, first of all, again, you're going to be missed. Uh, it's hard to fill your shoes. You've been a super friend to Deanne and I. And Trent... We open the door and welcome you, and any time you want to come on this program, it's yours. Thank you very much, sir. And by the way, if I'm sick and you want to host the show, you can come over and do that, too. (laughs) Take care of you. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy Wynn and Trent Walls, two outstanding individuals with Les Schwab Tire Centers, especially Tires West on Overland and Burley. Thank you for coming up here. I really do appreciate it. We appreciate you letting us come up here, too. Thank you. Taking time on your show. And the dog didn't bite you because the dog was put away. He was locked up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cujo is put away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. God Zach. bless you for being Thank here. You. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Deanne will see you out. Thank you. Trent, best to you. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate yep. it. Two outstanding individuals in our area of the Minicasha Magic Valley area, and I say thank you very much to Randy Wynn for all he has done for us, representing the Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, and the new man, the new manager, Trent Walls, excellent people, excellent. 
We're going to pay some bills, and then we're going to have the senator on with us in just a moment. I want to remind everybody about our friends at Let's Ride. Ooh, get your motor running. Absolutely stop over today. Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. And look at the weather for this weekend. Get outside, crank up that engine on that four-wheeler or that side-by-side, and just enjoy. Well, get over there today. Absolutely, a showroom is just full of fun and all the accessories and, of course, the super service department to keep you running. All of this at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World where the fun is sold. Absolutely. One other good word before we go to the phone line and get our dear friend on, Senator Kelly Anthon, I want to remind you that right over in his neck of the woods, don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and so much more with your friends that care about you. Dedicated and responsive to your needs, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4424. Right now, let's go to the phone line. And with us, and uh, still mopping his brow after a rather lengthy legislative session, Idaho Senator Kelly Anthon, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, uh, Zeb, and the third longest in Idaho history. So really? This was one for the record book. You know, there's so much to be done at a legislative session, and there's so much to get accomplished. You are the voice of the people up there for uh, probably about two months. But my goodness, it must be a little wearing and tearing on the family when the session goes longer than expected. Well, it is. And, and, and I'll tell you a couple of kind of interesting things. One is, I have a family who supports this. Uh, call us crazy, <laughs> but, but I, I don't have too much trouble in, in that area. Now, now, what is interesting is in a typical session in the Idaho legislature, which in wisdom is a winter session. I mean, we are a citizen legislature. We were designed around, to be honest, the farm season. Uh, we go up there when the weather's bad, and we're supposed to get out of there when the weather's good. And uh, in that short window of time, you will see as many as 900 bills drafted. Wow. 900 bills drafted. And at the end of the day, you'll still have about three or 400 new laws. And so if you think of the amount of sifting and arguing and studying that you got to do to get through that, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it is a lot of work, but it's also kind of scary. And, you know, they, they often say we're all better off when the legislature's not in Boise, and I agree with that. I think... Uh, I think it's good for us to pause, and I'm glad to be home, and, and uh, uh, boy, it was a long one. Let me ask you this, and I'm going to ask Wheels if you can ride the game a little bit over there and turn Kelly up when he's speaking and then watch the feedback, but I appreciate it. But, Kelly, uh, is there enough being done, do you think, in our school systems and also for us adults, maybe to take the time and the effort and the citizenship to go up and watch and see the mechanics of the legislative session? It's easy to gripe and complain, but maybe if they understood what's going on better they would not be so quick to criticize well i think that's fair zeb i mean if you if you know if you think of any business even the tire folks that were just on there with you i don't know anything about tires i can only look from the outside and and say well that was a stupid way to do things you know but but when you're in in the shop then you learn the real business and that is the case in anything i've ever done in my life uh no matter what job it was um but it certainly is the case with the legislature. They're, things are nuanced. They are, they're complicated. And one of the great things I think that's happening in Idaho today is that you do have access. You have more access than ever before in Idaho history. You can go online and, and in a hurry, look up a bill and read it yourself. Uh, you, can, you can go on to Idaho Public Television during the session. You can watch every single thing that's happening on the floor of the Idaho Senate. You can tune in to, to committee hearings if you're curious about what's going on there. So very, very much uh, there is an opportunity for Idahoans to the extent they want to know and they want to get involved uh, to be involved. Now, that having been said, um, one thing I have really honored and really cherished are those folks who trust me. <laughs> and, 
and I, I take that as a great stewardship. Um, you know, I shouldn't uh, be cavalier about that at all. For people who trust me to go to Boise and vote for me and to, to make these hard decisions for what I think would be good for their families and their businesses, that's a lot of pressure for me. I, I take it very seriously. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, yeah, no, I think, Zeb, and I'll tell you, there were a couple instances this session, um, because politics is an ugly business, that uh, you, you start hearing the rumors turning about uh, things in Boise. But my response to people when they had concerns was, well, let's look at the bill together. You know, go, let's go look at it. Go, go read it. Yeah. Um, don't, don't listen to some special interest group out of, out of state or out of Boise, for that matter, that's telling you the way things are. You, you can go look it up yourself. What you just said is something that I think should be tape recorded and put into every desk back in the Congress of the United States. I don't think we'd have the haranguing and the hassling between the Democrats and the Republicans if they would adopt the same philosophy that you just said. Hey, let's quit this partisan you-know-what. Let's sit down. Let's go over this thing. Really, if you find something that you don't agree with, let's try to get some common ground. Kelly, that's over and done with right now, and it's a shame because we, the people, the citizens, the taxpayers, are suffering. It it is shocking to me the amount of partisanship that has taken place in Washington, D.C. And and just what you've described, a gridlock that just seems insurmountable at times because nobody's willing to give. And it's all about the the score and not getting the the work of the people done. Um, I, I can tell you, I don't feel that way about Idaho. You know, you, you have the flavor of partisanship in these things, and you're, I, I fear, honestly, that we're getting more of it. Um, but you don't have to, to agree, you know, you don't have to agree, but you do have to get the work done. And I often recite in Boise, and you can ask other legislators, I'm often saying this, reasonable minds can disagree. Reasonable minds can disagree. We can, we can both be reasonable and just say we just don't agree on that. And, um, and, and it's when we get to this place where we're going to start the personal attacks and the, the gutting people publicly to try to get political gain, is a, it's a bad place for Idaho. Absolutely. Absolutely. That being said, Kelly, let's talk a little bit about a problem that I don't think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but the problem of Medicaid expansion is being exacerbated, I think, still to this moment, this day, on the funding, the budgeting, uh, the potential cap, which I don't think you can have one. Who's going to qualify? This thing is not over yet, is it? Oh, no, Zab, this is not over. Um, let me point out a couple of issues along the way that we all as Idahoans ought to be thinking about as we encounter this, this issue and others. One is, um, you know, the Idaho legislature kind of stewed so long that the people brought forth the initiative. And, in, and the, the initiative process, by the way, is something protected in the Idaho Constitution. And it's a good thing. Um, but what, what we've learned, in, at least in my opinion, about the initiative process is when you bring an initiative, you don't have to figure out how you're going to pay for anything. You don't, you don't have to disclose to the, the voter. You don't have to disclose to the petition, uh, by the petition gatherer. Nobody has to tell anybody what it's going to cost or how we're going to pay for it. And so that is something that I think has been brought to light. It's, um, it's, I don't mean that to be a, a direct criticism of the Medicaid initiative, but just the initiative process on its own. The other thing that came to light in my mind was that if we're not careful the initiative process will be run out of the urban centers of Idaho. And the folks in the rural communities will have a, a, a decreasing voice in the petition gathering process. So mm-hmm. the questions for the ballot will be, in my fear, is my fear, uh, decreasingly uh, from the rural voters. So, so there's that issue, okay? So that certainly is something we need to be thinking about. But with regard to Medicaid expansion, you know, it was quite a fight this year. And one of the main fights was whether or not folks should be required to work if they're going to go into, if they're in a very, very narrow definition inside of the expansion population. But for all the folks who are listening, and then maybe it would be good for you if, you, if you're concerned about this, go look at the ballot. Uh, go, look, go get on the Internet and look what they told you on the ballot. What they told you in the explanation propon- as proponents of Medicaid expansion on the ballot was, this is for people who are already working. This is Medicaid for folks who are already working. Absolutely. In the gap. Mm-hmm. 
and cannot afford insurance. That was the, the pitch. So now you get to the legislature and there is uh, gnashing of teeth over the concept that you might require somebody to be working. So, so these are kind of the lines that got drawn. And uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, and you've, I think you've kind of described it today, Zeb, this is, a, this is not a, an easy process. It's sausage making, and nobody likes to watch that. And, and uh, every once in a while, you get a good sausage. Out of the well, let me ask you this, Kelly, and I'm yeah. not trying to point my fingers and uh, denounce or criticize a certain or respective area of our state, but the truth is in the pudding. The estimates of population increase for the Boise and Treasure Valley areas alone are absolutely off the charts. That being said, a lot of the major power politically is going to be going into those areas. And what you said just a minute ago about the other parts of Idaho and the rural representation of Idaho, I think a lot of people ought to be nervous about that. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. I take this part of my duties very, very, very seriously. I think about it all the time. Um, I am absolutely, I, I am and I am absolutely committed to be a voice for the rural areas of Idaho. Um, you're going to see the populations continue to grow in what we call our urban centers. Now, they're not New York City, I get that, but that's what they are. And, and you're going to see in the next uh, census a realignment of our legislative districts. There will continue to be, I would, I suggest, there are going to continue to be 35 senators. But more and more of those senators are going to come from your urban areas, namely the Treasure Valley primarily. You might see growth in places like Coeur d'Alene. Twin Falls has a very small urban district, which is fine. They, it's a very conservative, good district. And then over in Idaho Falls. But, but all you have to do is look south to Nevada and you get a sense of what's going on, of what's about to go on. Mm -hmm. So we need to have strong voices. We need to have leadership in the legislature that is, is rural. We need to continue to support our ag industries as they assert the issues that are important to them. We have, we have our work cut out for us. We need to be mindful of it in terms of transportation. So in other words, we don't want a majority rule or a mob rule, for lack of a better term, to be deciding how we spend uh, dollars on, ten on transportation. Because uh, sure, uh, you're, you better be sure shoot, and that money's going to go to Ada County or Treasure Valley. Right. right. And we'll get less and less of it in these rural large districts that need lots of, lots of road work. With the influx of people, and I want to again word this very carefully, coming into our state, a state that was at about 1.4 million, and now there's talk about it won't be long and we'll be exceeding the 2 million mark. When you have that kind of an influx of people and different philosophies and uh, growth in certain areas, uh, you also bring in other problems that are already going on in other states, whether it's the homeless issue, like what's going on in Colorado, uh, now they're trying to pass legislation that basically says, and I can't imagine this stupidity happening here, that the homeless can basically set up camp anywhere they want on public land and just stay there. I mean, we're bringing in other problems from other areas. How concerned are you about that for the future? Well, I'll tell you what I've kind of noticed. Um, I've noticed that it depends on how the population, uh, let, me, let me put this, uh, what, what is prompting the population growth does matter. So as an example of this, Zeb, I've looked at Colorado. If you look at Denver, there was when they when they legalized recreational marijuana. Yep. There was an influx. There was a rush of people into that that city. That's right. And it caused all kinds of uh, problems. Uh, and and what I mean by that is, for example, obviously some societal problems um, in terms of crime and other things. And if you want to go research it, it's out there. But, but it also did some kind of collateral issues. There were collateral problems that no one anticipated, like there was a housing crunch, a terrible housing crunch in low-income housing. Uh, so there, there are some... Now, that's, that's, if you bring people in that way, it's a different dynamic than if you bring them in purely on prosperity. And, and that's not to say that even if you bring them in on prosperity, there's not going to be these issues. And so we are going to feel these growing pains um, I can tell you this, I feel pretty good about the Magic Valley. And because, um, you know, uh, oh, I just take the communities that I know well. And the Burley Rupert community is one of them. You're seeing some growth there. 
But if you look at the percentage growth and what that means in terms of the overall population, it's not the kind of boom you're talking about that fundamentally should change anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we do need to be very, very smart about it. We have a caller with a question for you, Kelly. Quickly, caller, you're on the air. Go, please. Well, the, yesterday on our one of the local radio stations, they were talking about how people, I guess, in Twin, were told to be careful, or maybe in Idaho in general, to be careful to look for hypodermic needles before they went out onto the field where their children played baseball or soccer or whatever. You know, this is a problem in Seattle, problem in Portland, problem all over in California, and they're here. They're here. I mean, it was on our news. And and the recreational, you know, use of marijuana is, and heavy welfare state, Oregon, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, these places are falling apart. And uh, I don't know. We've got to save our state. We we might be the phoenix that saves the rest of the country. I tell you what, it's we, we, people are just don't know. It's scary. Something's got to be done. I uh, appreciate your call, caller. And Kelly, would you respond, please? I, I absolutely will, and I do appreciate that. And you know, I did see that on the news. And um, we've got to be very careful not to let this spill in. I'm, here's what I think. I think a couple of things. One is. We have to, we have the advantage, I think, of seeing some of these other communities. Uh, You know, uh, a welfare state is not good for anybody. Nobody. There there are folks where a safety net is is necessary, but when we create a dependency on the government and we start to to take away the value of the family, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for the problems that you're seeing in these other states around us. Um, you know, I, I, I always think about Ronald Reagan. I think he said something in the effect of, you know, you start with your, ta- your family around the table. That's where you're going to start. And so we, I, I really feel like we need to double down on the values that we have in Idaho that have brought us to where we are. And, uh, and I think that that certainly is the district that I represent, to be honest with you. I don't, like I said, I don't worry about it quite as much. But I understand that as we see this growth, you're going to see some of these problems migrate. Um, it also, just to hear, I think that was Randy, I can't remember, I couldn't hear very good, but I think what uh, the other thing that we have to be cognizant of is how we're going to deal with crime. Because what you also see in some of these states where there are problems is a real softening on criminal prosecution and being tough on crime. And there's a balance there because uh, one of the things I've, I've had the advantage of seeing in my career because I've practiced law and done some things is that you see that, um, you know, a good stiff prison sentence always doesn't really always fix an addiction. You know, some of these things. You start to figure out that, that we might have to get a little bit smarter about how we deal with this stuff. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if somebody's dealing drugs in the state of Idaho, they ought to be locked up. And they, they ought to learn uh, that they don't do that in Idaho. So, so we've, got to, we've got to start thinking about as these problems come to us, and there are societal problems, whether probably we grow or not. I think some of these things are happening even in the places that aren't growing. Um, but we've got to be ready to address those. And, and I don't have all the answers to that, but I, I sure welcome any, any things. I'll tell you what I've been, I've been working on in Boise as an example, is when you have these people in prison, you know they're on, on the way back out the door. Um, I think there's some real value in teaching them to work and getting them ready for work. And there was a really good bill that went through the Idaho State Senate unanimously last year that didn't kind of find its way to the governor's desk. But, you know, let's, let's get these people in, in an ag job, uh, get them trained in a skill so that when they get out of prison, they're not idle hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some things we can do, and I think we're making some progress. I want to go back a little bit further, though. I want to go right back to kindergarten in our discussion. And the reason I say that is we are letting, allowing, and growing a culture of defiance with our young people. After I heard about, <clears throat> pardon me, that California bill, SB 14, that would, if it's accepted in the California Assembly, it 
would allow and prohibit students from being suspended from school for being willfully defiant against their teachers and the school system. Kelly, all that is doing is becoming a breeding ground of contempt and problems. I don't want to see that come to Idaho. Well, I agree, Zeb, and I, I would say to you, probably if you want to learn what not to do, you take a look at the California legislature. But um, I'll tell you what, um, it is naive to believe that in a, any kind of a school system, a lack of discipline is, is an advantage. Right. right. And um, I do think that does not do well for us. I, I tell my children, you better behave. You know, and, I better, and when I talk to their teachers, I ask them, are my kids behaving in your classroom? Um, so much of that, though, as I've spoken about education before, does rely on a very good uh, system at home. And so, Zeb, the other thing, to your point, is we have got to be vigilant in not allowing the government to, to run us from cradle to the grave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we have, to, we have to raise our own children. And we have to, I, I feel very strongly about this, too, when I'm in Boise. I don't like anything that seems to chip away at a parental, uh, parental right to make decisions for and on behalf of their children. Uh, these are things we have to be standing up for, and, and uh, it's, it's, it, you get a feeling sometimes that on, if you take set, the Senate Bill 14 that you talked about, it's the it's who's running the asylum kind of a question. Absolutely. 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 But you know what happens in California, very unfortunately, seems to spread like a cancer around the rest of the United States. And we need families to become a part of the school system. We need families to sit down with the superintendents and the teachers and really find out what little Johnny and Susie are doing. Not to allow these kids to sit in classes with their feet up on the desk and tell the teacher, we're going to do what we want to do. That's the problem problem with society today you got to go back to the young young ages and see why we've got the problems in the court system that's going on right now yeah you know um i think you've hit the nail on the head and, and when you talk about the education system um, if you if you uh, propose an education system either in terms of teachers or whether it be the students where there's no accountability that's a failing education system that's a system that fails there has to be accountability for those who participate, both the teachers That's and right. for the students. That's right. And, and, you know, Zeb, to your family, your point, getting the families involved, I think, and I think our teachers, if you talk to our teachers in our area, they will tell you the critical importance of a parent that's involved, both in discipline, both in, beha- in behavior, in performance academically, and so on and so forth. So these are old-fashioned values. There is nothing new <laughs> that I'm saying here. Uh, but this is what we, I, I think we need to double down and reassert on a local level, uh, do it around our own kitchen tables, and that's about the best place to start. You know what? I wished I had at least another hour to visit with you. Ladies and gentlemen, every time he's on my program, we always want to hear more. Senator Kelly Anthon, God bless you for your time this morning, and somehow I'm going to put the bite on you to make sure that you can come back more often. Thank you so much for your time here this morning. I'm always happy to be there, and God bless you, and thanks for the caller today, and thanks for everything. I appreciate it. All right, Kelly. Thank you. Uh, He's doing a great job as one of our Idaho senators, Kelly Anthon, thank you very, very much. Right now it's time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by our friends at Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. We talked to Leiden Crane a little bit ago this morning for the Chamber Report. Thank you, Leiden. And, of course, uh, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company have been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. Wow, that is a long time of great professionalism. Tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, financial statement preparation, Operation, retirement planning, all of this and so much more. All you need to do is contact them with offices in Burley and Rupert and let them help you. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane and Company. You get a hold of them today. Right now, here's the weather. Another beautiful day in the valley as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting partly cloudy skies for today. A little bit of a breeze, not too bad. Expecting a high of 62 tonight, low of 33 for tomorrow as we kick off the weekend. Mostly sunny skies, high of 68 with an overnight low of 78. 
By Saturday, mostly sunny skies. The high pressure system is going to stick around just for another day or two. High about 74 with an overnight low of 42. Sunny and 77 for Sunday. Then for Monday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers and possible thunderstorms in the forecast. Partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 72. And then for next week, looks like temperatures are going to be cooling off for a little bit as clouds are going to be sticking around. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zeppeth Ranch. Thank you very much, Gina. And again, our weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. The best serving you, your family, and your business with accounting services you need. Offices in Burley and Rupert, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Holy smokes, about this time of the morning, I really get hungry, and yes, I am starving to death. And I'm going to tell you right now some great places to go if you're hungry for this lunch hour. Oh my goodness sakes, how about stopping over to the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley. Oh, how about a mint Oreo shake with maybe a famous Farmer Brown burger and the fries and the special sauce or maybe a fish sandwich or maybe a shrimp basket with fries. Oh, 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 you're going to love the food at the AC Drive-In 601 East Main in Burley. Well, that Move on over to Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Oh, my goodness sakes, everybody goes there for their morning coffee. And then they have a breakfast burrito, scrambled eggs, bacon and sausage, cheese, onions, tomatoes, and sauce all on a tortilla shell. <laughs> Knock your boots off delicious, along with all the other great menu choices. At Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Well, not one, but two locations of burgers, etc., are available for your eating delight. 124 South Oneida and Rupert, 700 Overland in Burley. Oh, my goodness sakes. They've got all kinds of delicious sandwiches over there, like the fish sandwich combo they have available after 3 p.m. for only $5.99. Wow. And you can stop in, check out all the great items on the menu. You and really nice people serving you at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. Last but not least, let's head on over to Stevo's at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Oh, oh, food the way you love it. Absolutely. They've got that patio scheduled because of the weather being nicer. As a matter of fact, this weekend it might be open. You better stop over and check it out. The warm weather, the patio, music, great food, like buffalo burgers oh it's fantastic menu choices that absolutely are delicious at stevo's 290 south 600 west of hayburn you stop in and see these great folks today right now we're going to take a little break and uh let me see what I got coming up next hour. Cache County School Days, Superintendent Dr. James Shank will be on the program. Our business salute with Jeff over at Lee's Furniture. And then at 1030 this morning, one of my favorite guests, Dr. Gerard Lomero from back east. And we're going to be talking about the political climate with the bar cross-examination. So we're going to talk about that. Right now, wheels, take it away. Here we go, dancing around the Maypole. Good morning on this May 2nd. I hope you're having a great, great day. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best in tires and the best in service. Don't forget, too, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Helping you get back to being you. I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Teamed up with your whole home comfort systems. Oh, my. If you're in the market for a new Lennox home comfort system, check it out. They're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new system. Contact Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459. And terms and conditions apply. See the dealer for details. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. 
Well, we also have just a moment here. I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Patterson's. Oh, my. I've got to get in there. I've got to get in there in the next couple of days. I'm looking for something special that I'd like to have. And they've got all your electronics needs right there at Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley. Yes, yes, Curtis and Lorena. And the number to call, 678-6997. Whoa, they got all the TVs, Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, LG TVs. They got it all, all right there. And, of course, home theater systems. You can come home from work and kick back and go, I love my home. There you go. Check it out today at Patterson's. They are open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, 421 East Main in Burley. Patterson, stop in and see them today. Wow, we've got a lot of things cooking here, and uh, also want to remind you that we're about ready to go with our next segment, and that's, of course, Cassia County School Days. And uh, our major sponsor for Cassia County School Days has been with us for quite some time, and they are a wonderful store, a family store, a child's world at 1308 Overland in Burley. You know, whether it's spring, whether it's summer, fall, winter, whatever, they've always got the clothing for you over there, and they've got all the children's clothing, and they've got the baby furniture, and they've got all the games, puzzles, toys. They've got everything in there for you to enjoy. Stop in and check it out today A child's world at 1308 Overland in Burley, and they bring you Cassia County School Days. With us on the program this morning, Superintendent of Schools for Cassia County, and he's been here numerous times in the past, Dr. James Shank. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, I am looking forward to more of the warmth and the sunshine that comes with summer, and I would imagine as a superintendent of schools, you already have the last day of school marked on the calendar, ready for a trip to the Bahamas to go tarpon fishing, whatever, right? Well, I wish, yeah, but uh, (laughs) certainly we know when the last day of school is. Well, tell us a little bit about this last year, your first year, basically. Give us a little talk about what you thought happened that was good, bad, ugly, whatever, uh, here in Cache County. Well, I, I would I would say that it's been a great year. Um, you know, we focus on learning and our outcomes of learning, uh, which are why we're in business. And um, so we've had some real good growth uh, throughout the year, and um, actually, our graduation rates are looking um, very, very strong as we get close to the end of the year here. Um, so I would say that's you know our main focus, and that's what um, uh, we like to talk about too um, quite a bit. But you know we had some struggles with our bond. Uh, I think everyone's aware of that, and where it is that our facility needs will take us in the future. We're certainly working hard on that. Um, you know, so as far as the time it's it's gone by so quickly as everyone knows it's hard to believe that you know we're already looking at uh, one year uh, completed school year 1819 and uh, you know I would say generally from my perspective I think things have gone well Dr. Shank let me ask you let's talk a little bit more about graduation rates let's talk a little bit about the senior class let's talk a little bit about uh, what they did to obtain their graduation certificate and where they're headed I mean kind of give us a general synopsis of this class of 1819 that's going to go out and shake hands with the real world tell us a little bit about it all right, very good. And I think I'll just go through each high school real quickly. So if we're looking at, let, let's start with Oakley, uh, Oakley High School. Right now they've got um, 35 seniors in their graduating class, and uh, every one of them uh, is on track for graduation and will have completed all the requirements. And so they will have 100% um, graduation out uh, in Oakley. Um, let's take a look at Raft River. We've got, um, it looks like of, their graduating class, we've got 26 total students at Raft River, and all but one um, are certain to graduate, and there's one that's working very hard to try to finish um, by year's end, but might need a little bit of summer time uh, to, to get done with a, a credit. Um, so as far as on-time graduation, it looks like about 96% mm-hmm. um, at Raft River, and I'm sure that that one will finish sometime during the summer. Um when we take a look at Burley High School, uh, we've got uh, 211 students in that graduating class, 
198 are um, 100 percent on track. There's 10 that are working hard uh, to get to the end. Uh, and then there are six that, uh, although they'll work hard, they'll probably need some summer work and maybe a couple of other credits. And so they're looking at about a 97% graduating class. Uh, looking at DECLO, i got to pull my, my data sheet here real quick, but uh, looking at DECLO, um, where'd they go? Sorry about that. That's all right. If your desk looks anything like mine, we're both in trouble. <laughs> okay, got it. Uh, DECLO is uh, 71 students in their uh, graduating class, and they're looking like they're all going to uh, get through. There might be one or two that struggles, but essentially it's uh, looking very, very good, perhaps uh, 100% and perhaps maybe a 98 uh, somewhere in that context. Mm -hmm. So of our um, four major high schools, um, we're well above the state average. I don't know if everyone's aware, but across Idaho, there's uh, an 80% graduation rate. And here wow. in Gadget County, we're either uh, pushing 98, 97, and then um, essentially maybe three high schools will have 100% in the end. So our end product is very, very uh, successful, if you will. Uh, they're able to get those diploma rates um, very, very high, and uh, we're uh, extremely pleased about that. Now, in terms of your question about post-high school outcomes, uh, we'll measure those um, once we're finished with the year uh, and take a look at how many kids have indicated that they're off to college, how many will um, do uh, service uh, with their churches and so forth, uh, how many will go into the military, um, and measure that against kids that uh, didn't indicate any plans at this point, whether they're, uh, you know, they might be going into the workforce immediately, and that's their choice. Uh, some might have a have earned a certificate already um, and, in, and secured employment. We do have that uh, machine operator apprenticeship program, so we know that there will be kids that will enter um, the workforce immediately. And so in terms of our, I guess I want to frame this as um, when we look at did our students finish everything that uh, we wanted them to do with requirements and standards that the state sets, um, that's, a, that's an absolute measure that we want to make sure that we're hitting. And if we miss one or two, uh, we want to make sure that they have plans to complete mm -hmm. uh, soon after. Dr. Shank, let me ask you this. Uh, I think what you're doing in Cache County and the surrounding area of Magic Valley, I see a lot of really good students. I talk to a lot of really good teachers and administrators. How do we stack up then when you compare like your graduation rates, et cetera, with other states in the Northwest? Where are we? Well, our graduation rate in Idaho, I can speak clearly to um, our neighbor to the west in Washington because that's where I moved from. Uh, our graduation rate is higher than um, in Washington when I left. They were about 78% across the state. Here in Idaho, we're about 80%. So we're, we're above one of our peers. I'd have to go down and see how, um, you know, as far as Utah goes, how we compare there. Um, I can't quote that, but 80% we're growing. We're actually getting better. I know that's an improvement from the year prior. Um, and, of course, in Cajun County, um, you know, we want everyone to graduate, and that's our goal. Uh, and we have things in place to make sure that uh, we don't miss kids. And when we do miss one, we, we feel really bad about that. And, uh, we encourage them to, to not give up and quit. You know, I want to compliment you and uh, all the teachers and the parents, etc., within the confines of Cache County and, for that matter, the southern part of the state. It seems to me like a lot of the negativity that's aimed at Idaho education is absolutely unfounded and very biased. And I, I think listening to you, the optimism of making things bigger and better, wow, there's a lot of opportunity in Idaho education. There is, and there, there are lots of, if I may, metrics that people will want to point to and say we're, we're 49th here or 48th or whatever, but we're ignoring a lot of the things that we do very, very well uh, across the country. Um, and our NAEP scores in AEP, and that's a national assessment. Uh, Idaho is one of the top performing states in the country, and that seems to get um, for some reason, not a tremendous amount of uh, talking about. But we do actually some things very, very well, and some of these um, metrics that were measured and uh, want to say, well, uh, the amount of money that we throw into education is less, so therefore we, we fall down. Um, but the, pr 
the end product is high. Absolutely. So it's a good bargain, if you will. You know, there was um, a gentleman on our program, and for the life of me, you're going to have to help me out here a little bit, uh, a teacher that I was so impressed with uh, in your school system that was teaching kids the real world, reality town. Please bring me up to speed on that. That man and that project, I think you hit a home run out of the park by having that. Oh, we did, and we've gotten so much uh, positive input around doing reality town and um, you know the whole the whole notion there is to try to give students an opportunity to see what life is going to truly be like and how they can guide their um, their choices now towards being realistic about what the end product will be and I I you know I, I smile and chuckle and w- when I was 11 12 years old you know I I was headed towards the NBA uh, in my mind and needed a little bit of a reality check and got one later um, but uh, anyway, that's what we're trying to, to set up so kids have a better understanding. I, 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 I think those things are happening. Uh, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think those things are happening. I, I really was excited to have him on the program, and we have a caller calling in. When you hear the move of a cow on this show, it means that there is a caller. Good morning. Quickly, you're on the air. Well, I, you know, I really sounds good what you're doing, and... I noticed that last week or the week before there was a controversy up in Blaine County at Wood River School District over, uh, you know, ceiling tiles. And and uh, there was a lot of backlash from, I guess, people in the valley talking about how there was indoctrinating indoctrination going on up there, which doesn't surprise me. See, if we don't teach our children and the truth of our history and, and society about where we are. And, and, and we don't play in school. And, uh, you know, how you instill fundamental values in children is, is hard if parents aren't doing it because it's not the job of the school district. But, you know, if we're intentionally indoctrinating them in a communist or socialist manner, See, we can't have that happening here. And uh, I know in some cases in the past there's been certain teachers that were leaning to the left, and I had to deal with them with my own children. Quickly, caller, quickly. I I don't know how you deal with it, but it's not something we can tolerate here, I don't think. We need to save America the way it was intended by the Founding Fathers and teach our children such. Thanks. Amen. Uh, Respond quickly to the caller, if you would. Oh, I, I, I agree with him that we need to teach our children uh, the founding principles of this country. And, um, you know, you're not going to get me to, to, to say that, that uh, that's not what we're, uh, or the opposite is what we're about. We're not. Uh, we teach the standards that uh, the state of Idaho requires us to teach. Um, and this notion that somehow we're working towards the socialistic end or some communistic end, um, in our, our presentation of materials, I, I would just say that that's a false that's a false notion. Yeah, and I would say that the program, and I want to revert back to this because the enthusiasm that the teacher displayed on my program and talking about Reality Town and about the kids and how they were learning and everything, that all goes into building healthy taxpayers for the future. And I was absolutely, I'd give this teacher an A-plus for his attitude. Man, I enjoyed having him on. That's great, yeah, and that's what we want to hear. When kids engage in uh, their learning and how their future, they're preparing for their future uh, so that they can be contributing members of society, then we're winning. And and I'm just excited to hear that type of feedback. You know, I'm late. (laughs) You're winning and I'm late. (laughs) Dr. James Shank, thanks so much for taking the time to be on our program. God bless you, man. Come back soon. Thank you very much, Jeff. All right. Appreciate it. Woo! I got to run here, and I want to tell everybody real quick about A Child's World. They are the sponsoring agent of our program segment called Cassia County School Days. Thank you very much. They're located at 1308 Overland in Burley. Don't forget a family store, A Child's World. We really appreciate them being a part of our program 
Cache County School Days. I want to remind you again about our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Don't forget they've got the home comfort systems, and if you're in the market for a home comfort system, a brand new one, well then, by gully, they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new system. Check it out today. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or visit them online at RamseysOnline.com. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox serving you with the home comfort systems. Right now, we're going to jump across the uh, river and through the desert over to Lee's Furniture and more we go. Our dear friend and Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Zeb, I'm doing well. How are you today? I haven't talked to you for a couple of weeks, and I just wanted to make sure that you're well and that you're not being dragged out on the track early in the morning to run with your son. I just wanted to make sure you're A-OK. Uh, no, I think I'd rather work. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, the spring clearance is going on. What other great things are happening over to Lee's Furniture Floors and more? Well, thank you for asking. We actually have a couple of specific things that I'd like to share with all of your listeners. Um, One is actually related to our mattresses. Um, We have just received a large shipment of mattresses in the new styles, which means now we have gone out to our warehouse. We have literally marked down all of last year's models, closeouts, the, the mattresses that are getting new fabrics, and all of these mattresses are at least... 50% 50% off, wow. some even up to 70% off. Wow, that is a huge saving. Yeah, this includes all styles, uh, both of our uh, Signature Series and our Beauty Rest, Beauty Sleep mattresses as well. So this is the time of year that we're getting in the new covers. So we've taken all of the previous models and discounted them. They're all fantastic styles, great quality, fully warranted but you can get these at significant savings. Oh, my goodness. Let me take advantage of that. Uh, Zeb, in addition to that, we have just received several new shipments of floor covering. Mm-hmm. This includes carpet, vinyl, and luxury vinyl planks. And right now, this is a great time during the spring. Many people are redoing their homes, uh, remodeling maybe their building. But we have these products in stock, and you can get significant discounts with our contractor savings right now. Wow. And this is all at least furniture floors and more, along with all the great furniture buys and the carpet buys. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah, so right now also in addition to that, we're running some specials on our window covering. Okay. This includes uh, blinds, uh, shades, um, shutters, all of those types of things. So you can get those on special right now. And in addition to that, Um, And you may have seen our ad that was just recently out with all of our furniture. Right now you can come in and you can purchase our furniture between 25 to 40 percent off, and that will run through this weekend as well. You know, Jeff, the thing is, and we've talked about this aspect of uh, Lee's Furniture Floors and more, a lot of people, maybe they've had uh, basically the same furniture and uh, the same location in their home for many, many years, and they've grown so accustomed to it, they really don't know what's going to look different or good in their home. What do they do? Come down and talk to your people? Yeah, we do. We have uh, we have the gals that work here. They, they're designers, and they can help out. I can speak with Hillary. She's she's great in that area, but we've got uh, Morgan and LeGrand that, who can help us with floor carving, some great ideas, and Bob, who who also works on our sales floor with our furniture, and they're they're fantastic. They're very knowledgeable, and they can answer any questions as well. Well, don't exclude yourself. I mean, you're pretty sharp on your own, man, about helping people. Oh, well, well, thank you if I slow down long enough to do that. But, uh, you know, Zeb, I just want to invite your listeners to come in. It's a great opportunity to get the spring savings with our spring savings, our, our warehouse clearance. And so come in and take a look, uh, because we've got all of these on sale. Uh, for those that are interested, we do have the uh, 12 months, 24 months interest-free, if that's uh, something that would be of interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, with our floor carving, we do offer some discounts on cash purchases. And so uh, there's additional savings. And, again, these are items that are in stock. Uh, we can deliver. We can generally have save, same day or 24-hour delivery. And, uh, anyway, uh, some great opportunities. You know, folks, it's really true, and I'm blessed to have them a part of my program with the best quality, the best service, and the best prices. This man right here, he's also a dear friend, Jeff, over at Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley. Jeff, quickly tell everybody when you're open. Uh, We're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., 
Saturday, 10 to 5. And just so everybody knows, we are the home of the low price guarantee. It's in writing. We guarantee the lowest price. And if you, for some reason, are able to find a lower price in that item, we'll not only match that price, but 10% of the difference. Absolutely. That is, our, that is our written guarantee. Absolutely. There you have it, friends. A real friend to you and your family for the beautification of your home. Lease furniture, floors, and more. Jeff, thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Zeb. You take care now. Bye-bye. You bet. Thank you, buddy. Uh, nice guy. Really, really a nice guy. Jeff over at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. We've got just a moment here, and I want to remind you, too, about two big auctions that are coming up on uh, tomorrow and Saturday, and they're both managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Oh, Joe Bennett and the crew, they really put on some good auctions. First of all, the one tomorrow on Friday is going to start at 4.30 p.m. It's over in Buell at 825 11th Avenue North. It's the Newton Estate Auction. And this one's going to have a lot of furniture, king-size bed, wooden headboards, and it's going to have antiques and collectibles, lots of glassware, uh, lawn and garden items. Don't want to miss it. Good, good auction tomorrow. The Newton Estate Auction over in Buell at 825 11th Avenue North, managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Then on Saturday, Saturday, they've got another sale. It's the Garner and Chisholm Antiques and Collectibles auction, auction. They've got all kinds of really neat antiques and collectibles. You don't want to miss this. If you're into that, this is the sale for you. It's going to be at 214 North Road in Jerome. Don't miss it. Starts at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Garner and Chisholm Antiques and Collectibles auction, managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Joe Bennett and his crew, no sale too big. No sale too small. The Bennett boys, yep, yep, they sell them all. Absolutely. We're going to take a small break and send it back over to Wheels at our main studio. And then, then we're going to come back with my dear friend, Dr. Gerard Lomero. Don't you go away. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. You know, I'm uh, very, very prejudiced, if you will, about many of the guests that I have on this program that I think do a better job than many others. And this next gentleman is one of those people. I'm proud to call him my friend. I'm proud to have him on this program many, many times. And I'm talking about the author of More Great News for America, political analyst, my friend, Dr. Gerard Lomero. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm still trying to get him on, sir. <clears throat> All right. Well, keep trying. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you've got the right number. Is it ringing into his studio? Yeah, and that's that's the thing is I'm having to try to call his studio line now. All right, keep trying. Keep trying, please. While Wheels is trying to get Dr. Lamaro on the program, uh, I want to remind you that next Monday on the program, uh, we've got a lot of really, really big folks coming on the show. I'm just going to go down the list of some of those while I wait for Wheels to tell me. We've got Richard Manning, naturally. We were, and I wanted to get this on the air. We were supposed to, here we go again, have United States Senator Mike Crapo on the program, but they had a change in the scheduling and have told me that he will not be on the program next Monday at 9.30. So we'll keep loading the bullets in the gun and keep trying to get him on the program uh, in the next couple of days following that. And then, of course, don't forget, we're going to have noted economist, and this man's been on major television shows all over the country. Jonathan Williams will be on the program, and then, of course, Vicky's Country Garden. So we've got a lot of things planned for Monday right here on the show. Uh, let's check with Wheels and see if we've got Dr. Lamero. Are you there, Wheels? <laughs> I am, sir. Yes, I just got him on the phone for you. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. As I stated a moment ago, one of my dear friends and a gentleman that I absolutely enjoy having on the program for all of his knowledge of what's going on in politics and what needs to go on in politics, Dr. Gerard Lomero. Sir, good morning. How are you? I am doing fantastic. It's great to be with you. 
Dr. Lomero, in the time that we have here this morning, uh, we've got a lot of things to cover and discuss, and your opinion is very much appreciated. Have you ever in your lifetime seen or heard the demeaning, negative, and absolutely slanderous comments made by senators to a person testifying in front of the Senate, as we did yesterday, against Attorney General Bill Barr? No, absolutely not. I think this is unprecedented, and I think what we have here is basically a Democratic Party that refuses to accept the results of the 2016 election, and they've been looking for two years to find some way to get rid of Donald Trump, and now they're really worried because they exonerated Donald Trump of any collusion possible charges, and instead the new attorney general is saying, hey, uh, Trump was spied on. Hey, it looks to me like uh, there are people that need to be investigated who are on the other side in that election. And so I think these people are trying to go after Barr now because they're worried that the Democrats are in deep trouble because if this was a true coup attempt, a lot of people think you read the evidence it was a coup attempt to exonerate Hillary Clinton so she could be president and then put something over, uh, you know, double cross or put something over on Donald Trump and, uh, and the evidence is coming out that that's what they did. They try to go after Trump, and now Barr is not taking that. He's saying, I believe in the rule of law. This is a man of integrity who believes in the rule of law, and he's going to investigate them, and they are really worried. Let me ask you this, and I'm going to ask my engineer at the studio when uh, Mr. Lamero, Dr. Lomero is speaking. Turn him up just a little bit, wheels, please. But yesterday, I had an opportunity, because of my scheduling, to watch and witness most of this testifying before the Senate. Now, I'm going to be very blunt and honest. Never in my life have I watched and listened to senators make complete fools of themselves, whether it was Camilla Harris or whether it was Blumenthal, or the worst was Senator Hirono from Hawaii. Her slanderous, and they were slanderous, remarks against Attorney General Bill Barr, absolutely, I think she should have been asked to leave the room. What are your thoughts? I think it was terrible. I think it was unprofessional, I think it was inappropriate, and I think these people on the Republican side, Trump and Barr, have done nothing wrong. They've tried to deal with essentially a coup attempt by certain high-ranking people in the Obama administration that wanted to tilt the election for the first time, I think, in known history, or even in, in, in textbooks, did we know of anyone who tempted to overthrow a presidential election. I think that's what they try to do. I think all the evidence keeps coming out, uh, and, and it keeps looking worse and worse for some of those Democrats. I think some of them are going to be going to jail one of these days. Dr. Lamero, when you look at the, I hate to say personality, but the structure, if you will, of the Democratic party right now with the what i would call a huge division a split in the middle of it with the pelosi's and the schumers and then on the other side of the coin or the other side of the chasm you've got the alexandria ocasio cortezes and the ilhan omars and other uh, this party seems to be severely fractured in the way they're going forward am i wrong that's been building up for years. You know, that's one of the trends I identified, and ultimately I think it will result in the shutdown of the Democratic Party. I think what has happened, they've gone from a mainstream party that, did, that was always known for focusing on the workers. You know, for years and years, that was people supposedly who, who were trying to help the workers in America. They've gone from that to a bunch of socialists, radicals. Some of them even will tell you they're communists. I mean, it can't get much worse. These people don't believe in the Constitution. They don't believe in following the laws. Most of them don't want to use the Electoral College. Most of them don't want First Amendment rights of free speech on campus. Most of them don't want you to carry a gun in the Second Amendment. And it goes on and on and on. These people are not into the Constitution and our freedom. 
and they are out of touch with America, they're out of touch with the electorate, and they're going to lose a whole lot of elections in the future, and I think the Democratic Party is going to shut down in 2021. You know, when you hear stories and read stories and uh, try to self-inform yourself as to what's going on politically, it will come as a shock to a lot of people that we even allow people like Ilhan Omar, uh, the Muslim congresswoman, to be in office when she is absolutely saluting and highlighting a terrorist group like Hamas. I mean, my goodness, Dr. Lamaro, this is America. We're not saluting our terrorist uh, people that are trying to kill our ally Israel and also do harm here. Absolutely. Who is she representing? Some Middle Eastern uh, terrorist group, or is she representing the people in her district? And I, I really don't know that she knows the difference. Uh, she's obviously got uh, an axe to grind with America, and I don't see how she ever got elected, and I don't know what to think of the people in her district unless they're all uh, terrorists who came over uh, looking for asylum or something. Let me ask you this, and with the books that you've written and all the studies that you've put together on research and everything, Dr. Lomero, every day I am amazed, and I mean this, I'm amazed and shocked that the American public would even give any credence, credence or any listening power to Bernie Sanders and others that are preaching socialism. We're just right now on TV watching what's happening with the horrors of socialism and Venezuela, people that are starving to death, people that are having to go to chaos to try to get their country back. And the socialists want to bring that here to America? What in the world is the matter with us? Well, it's not us, okay? It's a small minority of people who are vocal. We've got to remember, uh, just because we have people that say stupid things, not all Americans say stupid things. For example, you say a lot of smart things. I know that. And, and basically, this small group of minority has taken over the Democratic Party, effectively. And I don't think the Democratic Party is going to survive their takeover, because Americans are going to reject this. Americans don't want socialism. They don't want <clears throat> communism. They want to be able to go to church. They want to have a gun. They want free speech. They're going to reject this big time. Now, what the Democrats are doing in taking over socialism is they're trying to buy people's votes. You know, they're telling black Americans we're going to have slave reparations. If you had any slave history until 1600s, uh, you're supposed to get money. Uh, they're telling college students you'll never have to pay for college again. We're going to take care of your loans. We're going to take care of your tuition. They're telling other people that have high medical bills that they helped cause with their affordable, it's really the unaffordable care act, uh, you're never going to have to pay for anything. Medicare for all. Everything's free. And you know what? Some people buy that foolishly. Other people know it's a lie and reject it outright. And when most people start putting their heads on and thinking with common sense, they realize this is all a big lie. There's nothing for free. There's no free lunch in the world. You know, I sit here and I listen to your common sense and your uh, analysis of what's going on, and it just makes me wonder, is our school and education system, especially in the higher colleges and universities, are they that far gone that these kids, these millennials, can't see for themselves and think for themselves that capitalism and the American Constitution and the American value system have provided them everything with opportunities to be extremely successful but yet they will want to revert to where they might have to pay 30 bucks for a roll of toilet paper with socialism it makes no sense to me no it doesn't and you know it's all kind of illogical but it is our reality we have a lot of professors uh, who are pushing marxism you know they're living in an ivory tower if they had to get a job uh, and work every day in a real job pay real taxes, and, and basically see the real world rather than just talk about it from an ivory tower, it would appear different to them. But a lot of them have bought off on, on Marxism. They think Europe is oh, the greatest place in the world, and they, they point to the, some of the countries, Finland, they, uh, you know, the Dutch, others, and, and they think it's some wonderland. But those people are turning away from socialism because it doesn't work there. Things like, uh, you know, free salary. Everybody gets money, even if you don't work. 
on. It's crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But even though it, it makes no common sense, there are people who believe in it, they dream about it, they say, oh, it's so wonderful, but we just haven't done it right yet. We're going to be the country that does socialism right. Well, none of them ever work. Venezuela, they're starving to death. Absolutely. With that moo of the cow, that means we have a caller with a question and a comment for you, Dr. Lomero. Go ahead, caller. Quickly, quickly, you're on the air. Caller, are you there? Speak, please. All right, evidently their call did not come through. Dr. Lomero, you were talking about Venezuela. We were mentioning about uh, the horrors and the chaos that's going on down there. And I want to revert back just a little bit to our Congress. Uh, Jerry Nadler and others in the Democratic Party are yelling and screaming about obstruction of justice and everything else. But, you know, I'm going to throw this at you. I thought about this earlier this morning. The real obstructors of justice in this country right now are sitting in Congress with three-piece suits and wingtip shoes on, and they are the congressmen and senators that are not doing their job for us. Those are the real obstructionists of justice. Would you agree or not? I, I would say that there are people in uh, Congress who are basically trying to steer this whole thing in a certain direction, and I would say uh, there may be more than obstruction of justice. It may be just plain outright uh, dishonest and, and its own crime and its own sense, potentially, because you've got people that are trying to cover up what was done in the past and are attacking people that are honest, decent people. Uh, Attorney General Barr, everything we know about him is he's a decent gentleman who tries to follow the law. He said something yesterday that was profound. I guess you've heard it. And that is, is he said, you got to stop uh, turning political matters into legal matters. That's, that's right. what they're trying to do. They're that's trying right. to politicize uh, the situation uh, and, and, and turn it into a legal uh, situation. And this is not a problem of Trump breaking the law. He didn't break the law. And Barr didn't break the law by by putting out a summary report on Mueller. This is bogus. Absolutely. That's what I think is just downright wrong. Uh, we have that caller back on the air. I just about lost my voice. Hold on. <clears throat> a caller, go ahead, please. You're on the air. I'll try your call one more time quickly. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, my phone is Quickly, here. quickly, quickly. Uh, yes. Well, a uh, week ago, I was down in Salt Lake driving through town getting a you know, on business. And they there was a talk show down there and they were Mitt Romney had viciously attacked Trump. And Mitt Romney, you know, all of the good things that Trump has done, neither one of us could just name them off in a list because it would take too long and we couldn't remember them all. And Mitt Romney viciously attacked Donald Trump and had did nothing to help him. He has done nothing. And he, he is an obstructor a distractor, and it's amazing. And, and the people that called in down there who are from Salt, from Utah were so fed up with him. I don't know who elected him, but these kind of rhinos are so destructive to our country. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller, please, if you would. Yes, yes. Well, I, I agree with him that Mitt Romney is not helping our nation, and I think he did a terrible disservice to Trump. Trump went out of his way to help him yes. to get elected senator. Then he turns around and basically uh, attacks Trump. It's, it's unheard of. I mean, Trump is the head of his party. Uh, Trump helped him to get elected, and then he treats Trump this way. It's ridiculous. I tell you one thing. Some of the Republicans are no longer Republicans. The Republican Party, I've been saying for a long time, is going to split into a conservative party that backs Trump. And I think the rest of it is going to start its own party. I think Mitt Romney will start a progressive party, which is sort of like an establishment party with all the leftovers from the Republican Party and the leftovers from the Democrat Party. And the Democrat Party is going to cease to exist in two years. You know, one final thought, if I may, Dr. Lomero, and I've only got two minutes left. I'd like you to respond quickly to a severe border crisis. I think the worst that we've ever seen in this country of an invasion of literally thousands upon thousands that are demanding to come to the United States. Your thoughts quickly. 
I think it is a major crisis. I think it's the biggest we've ever had in the way of a crisis on the border. And I think the Democrats are just plain uh, unpatriotic to allow it to happen just to help them to try to get elected president in 2020. They're not going to get elected president. It's going to get cleaned up. The Republican Party is going to finish off the uh, – I mean, the – uh, American electorate is going to finish off the Democratic Party in 2020 when they take back the House and give it to conservatives, and when the Senate is more conservative, and when Donald Trump wins in a, a really in a, a landslide. Dr. Gerard Lomero, author and just a very nice man, political analyst, I thank you for your time. God's blessings to you, and please come back in the near future. Looking forward to having you back. Thanks, Dr. Lomero. Love to be back. God bless you and your wonderful listeners. Oh, thank you, sir. A uh, very nice man, and we wish him the best. Dr. Lomero, thank you for being on the program. Right now, it is time for our weather forecast, and the weather brought to you by Don Scarro and the crew at Scarrow's Meets, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657, and they've got all the delicious meats. Oh, my goodness. They've got all all the beef, pork, and chicken, and they've got all the pork ribs, marinated pork ribs, tri-tips. <laughs> the list goes on and on. And I always end up by saying bratwurst. They've got bratwurst, knock your boots off, delicious. All of this from Scarrow's Meats at 331 North Road in Jerome. We'll tell you more right after this with Gina and the weather. Another beautiful day in the valley as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting partly cloudy skies for today. A little bit of a breeze, not too bad. Expecting a high of 62 tonight, low of 33 for tomorrow as we kick off the weekend. Mostly sunny skies, high of 68 with an overnight low of 78. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies. The high pressure system is going to stick around just for another day or two. High about 74 with an overnight low of 42. Sunny and 77 for Sunday. Then for Monday, Monday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers and possible thunderstorms in the forecast. Partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 72. And then for next week, looks like temperatures are going to be cooling off for a little bit as clouds are going to be sticking around. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth. Oh, thank you, Gina. Well, I'll take a couple of good days in a row. It sounds like the weekend is going to be fabulous. Uh, yeah, we, we need it. We've deserved this for a while. Weather forecast brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and his great, great folks over there at 331 North Road, Jerome. The telephone number to call, 324-7657. Get ready for all those family gatherings and graduation. They've got all the meats right there at Scarrow's Meats. Changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. I had asked that a pastor or a minister call in at this time of the program. I said that earlier this morning, first hour, and discuss if they would please and perhaps even offer a prayer on this National Day of Prayer. A day that is an annual observance that we give thanks and turn to God in prayer for our nation, our families, our communities, our state, all of it that we've been blessed with by God's blessings. And I really had hoped a pastor or minister would call in, regardless of the denomination or the church. But like in many instances with the ministerial associations, crickets. One man is called in the last couple of weeks, one pastor. And the door is open for them to call in and issue a prayer. Don't ever tell me, well, we didn't hear on the radio. Everybody else does. Everybody else responds. And I feel like this day we have so much to be thankful for. Our country, the citizens, our families, our communities, our safety and security, our future. And there's a lot to pray for and there's a lot to be thankful that we have. We can always ask for more. But in essence, on this day, we should be thankful, very thankful, for what we have. And I'm really sorry that one, one pastor couldn't call in and issue a prayer 
on this National Day of Prayer. I want to thank our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, uh, for all they do in this program's presentation over the airwaves. Thank you very much to all of them, all seven locations. And they've got some of their very, very, very best tires on sale right now. Absolutely. Like the Ultra Z900 for your passenger cars. All-season traction up to 80,000-mile warranty. And then, of course, for your pickups and SUVs, the Open Country AT on sale. All-terrain traction, outstanding ride and quality. All of these tires, and of course, don't forget the best in brake service. Front end alignment, shocks and struts, and batteries. My goodness sakes, they really care. Service, like we were talking earlier this morning with Randy Wynn and Trent Walls, service reigns supreme. They really care about you driving in there, getting taken care of, and then you're out on your on the street and ready to enjoy the rest of your day. They really provide service to you. Stop in and see the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Thank you. Thank you very much, audience. And I mean this. I have the greatest audience of any talk show anywhere. I'll stand behind that. And you're always jumping in, helping me when we have some community projects. You're always there to support it. Thank you very, very much. And I wish you God's blessings on this National Day of Prayer. And we will be back next Monday at 8.06, where we always say, the way things were are the way things ought to be, and the world needs more cowboys. God bless.